The recent renewed proliferation of anti-satellite weapons among several nations has led to discussions about the potential implications for international security and stability in space. In this video, we're exploring the history, purpose, and current status of anti-satellite weapons, seeking to understand the complexities and challenges posed by their presence in the space domain and wider security contexts. Throughout the early years of the space age, the development of anti-satellite weapons was driven by strategic concerns and geopolitical rivalries between the United States and the Soviet Union. In 1957, when the Soviet Union launched the world's first artificial satellite, Sputnik 1, the United States became increasingly wary of the possibility that its Cold War adversaries might establish an orbital network of nuclear-armed satellites, providing them with significant military advantages from space. As a response, the U.S. initiated its first ASAT program, codenamed Bold Orion, which involved the development of an air-launched ballistic missile intended to target and destroy enemy satellites in orbit. Not to be outdone, the Soviet Union soon embarked on its own ASAT endeavors. They focused on co-orbital ASAT systems, which employed satellites that could essentially fly alongside enemy satellites before self-destructing, thereby incapacitating the target satellite through the explosion. This co-orbital approach presented a unique and challenging method of engaging satellites in space. The escalation of ASAT development during the 1980s marked a significant phase in the history of anti-satellite technology. Both the US and the Soviet Union demonstrated capabilities to intercept and destroy satellites in orbit using kinetic energy projectiles launched from the ground. The US successfully tested its ASM-135 missile in 1985, while the Soviet Union deployed its 79M6 contact system, which utilized co-orbital interceptors to engage and neutralize enemy satellites. As the technology progressed, other nations also began to explore ASAT capabilities, resulting in a renewed focus on anti-satellite weapons in recent years. In January 2007, China conducted its first successful anti-satellite test, codenamed Operation Fengyun 1C. During this test, China launched a kinetic kill vehicle atop a ballistic missile, which successfully intercepted and destroyed one of its own defunct weather satellites, the Fengyun 1C in low Earth orbit. The resulting debris from the test posed a significant risk to other satellites and the International Space Station, as it increased the space debris population in critical orbits. The test raised international concerns and led to widespread criticism, as it highlighted the potential dangers of anti-satellite activities to the long-term sustainability of space activities. Following China's test, in March 2019, India conducted its first ASAT test, known as Mission Shakti. Similarly to China, India used an indigenously developed ballistic missile interceptor to successfully destroy one of its own low-Earth orbit satellites. With this demonstration, India became the fourth country to possess an operational anti-satellite capability. While India maintained that the test was conducted to verify its national security interests and was not aimed at starting an arms race in space, it still generated concerns over the escalation of militarization and its potential impact on space security and stability. Over time, anti-satellite tests have produced 6,851 trackable debris fragments, with 3,472 still present in orbit. However, the actual figure is likely significantly larger, given that space objects typically need to be at least 10 centimeters wide to be observable from Earth. As a result, in April 2022, the U.S. pledged not to perform destructive debris spawning anti-satellite tests, signaling a notable shift. This commitment reflects a growing awareness of the potential hazards associated with space debris generated by anti-satellite activities. The pledge by the U.S. has been followed by other nations such as Japan, the Netherlands, Italy, and Austria, bringing the total number of nations to 13 as of April 2023. But the absence of other significant space powers such as China and Russia, and more recently India, raises questions about the broader global cooperation needed to address the challenges of anti-satellite weapons and promote responsible behavior in space. What are your thoughts on the possible renewed space race in the 21st century? Let's discuss in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more content.